Hi guys, it's uh, Wayne here from BritishFireScale.com. Um, I thought I'd make this quick video to show you how to file and prepare the, the uh, switch blades using the jigs that I've sent you. Um, firstly, I'd just like to say a big thank you for actually testing testing out the kits for me. Um, your feedback's very welcome and very, very, very useful to me, so thank you. Okay, the process is very simple, but I'm just going to run you through each step uh, as I go, really, as I as I do it. Um, the process is basically um, applying solder to the uh, to the end of the uh, switch blade. I've got one there. Uh, that will actually strengthen the uh, the tip of the tip of the blade up for for filing. Um, Popping the rail into the jig, the filing jig, um, which you should already have, which you have got. Um, filing off the rail, which is relatively easy. Um, once that's done, you'll be using the assembly jig. Um, this will actually hold the rail onto a chair plate ready for soldering. Okay, so what are chair plates? Um, I'll just hold this up to the camera. This is an etch I had made of 16 chair plates. So you can see fine track switch blade chair plates. Um, 16 there, so it's enough for eight turnouts. You'd need two chair plates, one for each switch blade. Um, these would actually be cut out of the etch, um, and as you can see, um, there's a little hole in each of them, um, which will actually take a pin provided, which goes through that hole, and also through a pre-drilled hole in in the tie bar. And the pins provided are 0.4 of a millimetre thick uh, pins, if I can focus it, and they've got a very small head on the end. It took me a while to source these. <laughs> so there's two of those. Also provided is the tie bar. If I can focus that in. There we go, there's the tie bar, and it's actually got two holes either side for the 0.4 pins to go through, and the middle hole is for the um, the switch machine, whether it's a servo or, or a tortoise, uh, so it's for the wire to go through the baseboard and actually operate the tie bar. So the aim is once you've filed the, um, the, the rail to a blade, you would actually want to... Um, I'm going to show you once this focuses in. The uh, the rail will actually sit. There's actually a re there's there's a recess. It's this section is actually lower than this section, and the rail will be held in the jig, right bu butting up right against that little lip and soldered like so. Um, but that's what the assembly jigs for. It holds everything in in place. Making it very, very easy just to just to solder the two together. Now you will need um, a 25 watt soldering iron um, with a flat, two millimeter flat kind of chisel tip. Let me show you my iron. This is a gas iron. Uh, it's a tip. So I'm actually using a, a chisel tip, and I've found that to be the best to work with and it, it, it um, gets the heat to the job better than for example I've tried uh, a point tip and it just didn't seem to work as well as a tip like that so that is what I recommend you need uh, solder I'm using one millimeter uh, resin core solder I don't actually know exactly what the melting temperature of that is because um, the label's fallen off. Uh, you want to need flux. Um, I'm using Fry Powerflow Flux, uh, which is good for lead-free lead solder. And you also need a file for obviously filing the switchblade and cleaning up after soldering. And you'll also need a 0.4 millimeter drill to actually clear out the uh, the the hole on the chair plate after you've soldered. Uh, but these will be provided on my website, BritishFineScale.com.
Okay, so really the first thing I need to kind of do is um, solder one side at the end of the blade uh, and it's applying solder into the recess of the rail um, with the purpose being to strengthen up the rail ready for filing. This is a lot a lot easier than it sounds really. Um, you know, I say soldering and that might make a few people cringe who haven't got solder experience um, but I assure you nor, nor have I. <laughs> um, all you really need is to, to apply flux, paste flux uh, into the recess of the rail, um, get some solder on, on, onto the tip of your iron and, and just you know touch the tip of the, uh, the rail and the heat does the rest the, the solder will flow in and then all you need to do is just, just rub it off with a file to clean it up really so it's, uh, I'll do that now and show you um, how easy that is really. First thing you really need to do is decide um, which, which side is the top of the rail. Um, the best way to do this is actually looking from the top, um, looking at the rail that way. The top of the rail is actually heavier than the bottom. Um, you should see quite easily if you turn the rail in your fingers, that's the top. It's, uh, it looks wider and the bottom is more rounded and you should be able to see by, by rotating it into the light and picking up the kind of the highlight which way is the top and the top is heavier than the bottom uh, once you know which which side is the top of the rail that you then know which side to apply the solder to um, obviously on the first rail it doesn't matter it can go either side but when you come to do the second uh, the switch blade it matters which side you apply the solder to um, now what you really need to do is just apply a little of the paste flux in onto the actual um, end of the rail uh, trying to apply it so it fills the recess of the rail doesn't matter if it gets everywhere because you can just clean it up afterwards and you just want to apply flux to the first uh, say 20 millimeters from the end of the rail All right. okay and then just clean it off the top and the bottom of the rail so solder doesn't go there so you really you've only just got flux in the recess of the uh, of the rail there and a quick close-up just to show you um, just the flux very crudely put on there but that will help the solder flow into the uh, into the recess of the rail you would have a very very hard time trying to do this without flux it, it just wouldn't flow okay so I'm actually using a, an old piece of um, toughener I've got lying around it's actually an old jig I was milling uh, just as not to burn the desk when I do this um, there's the rail with the flux there. I've pre-tinned the tip of my soldering iron. Uh, Pre-loaded a little bit of solder on there. And all I'm going to do is touch uh, the rail with the tip of the soldering iron. And the uh, flux will begin to do its stuff. And you just run the soldering iron up and down. And the solder will flow into the recess of the rail. Like so. I'm actually going to do that again, a little, little bit, a little touch more. So touch more solder. Hold down, just hold it there to allow the heat to get to the the rail, and then just again slide the uh, the iron up and down. And job done. Okay, just a close up of what I've done. You can see the solder in there, and it does look a little messy. But it doesn't have to be too neat because you just run the file along uh, along the side and it will clean up nicely. Okay, so using a file, all you need to do is um, just 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 clean it up. Just 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 rub the the rail with the file because the solder is very very soft. It just comes off quite easy. So what you're actually left with is just solder in the recess of the rail so you really you want to file down 
until you can barely, just about barely see the top and the bottom of the web of the rail. Okay, so just a little bit more filing. Doesn't take too long at all. I can just see the um, the top of the and the bottom of the web of the rail coming through now. So that's that's nice. What I then do is just clean off the top of the rail and the bottom. Just give it a rub and the top again. Yeah, lovely. There we go. So that's that's nice and clean now. Um, so that's really strengthened up the uh, the rail, and you'll end up putting the rail into the filing jig and filing the opposite side um, which will file it into a blade which is what we're going to do now